This is the revised BMW M340i and it's a little bit like Wiener Schnitzel because it's packed full of baby BMW beef being the M340i and not the full beefy M version. Plus it's got a crispy crust on the outside, look crispiness. Anyway, in this video, I'm going to talk you around the exterior of this car, talk you through the updates that BMW have made to it, show you the interior. I'm going to take it for a drive. And of course, I'm going to launch it to see how quick it is from 0 to 60 miles an hour. And considering it's really frosty today, that will really be putting this car's four wheel drive and traction control system through its paces. Because I'm Matt Watson, and you're watching Car Cold Wow, brr, shivery. Buy, sell, car, wow. Let's start this video by talking about the engine on the M340i, not because it's the most important point of this car, although it is, it's because my hands are freezing and I need to warm them. So it's a three litre straight six turbo that puts out 374 horsepower, 500 newton meters of torque, and it drives all four wheels via an eight speed automatic gearbox. Oh, let's just stay talking about the engine. It says M performance here. We've got BMW bits here. That's where you put your oil in and you've got the BMW logo here. This is actually just a cover, which is really good actually, because it gives you a nice flat surface to warm your hands on. I wonder if I can just get on it. Oh, I've worn my entire body. It's too cold. BMW says this car doing 0 to 60 in 4.4 seconds, but what's the reality? I'm going to find out with my specialist timing gear here. I can't believe how well that hooked up considering the conditions. That is insane. It's cold, slippery on the road. The tyres are cold as well. 0 to 60, 3.81 seconds. That's crazy! Excuse my French. The M340i gets upgraded brakes over what you can get on the normal 3 Series. So you have 348mm discs up front, gripped by four piston calipers, and at the back you've got 345mm discs gripped by a single piston caliper. But how strong are they? I'm going to do a brake test from 60 miles an hour. Let's see how long it takes to stop. So here we go, full emergency stop. The conditions are bad. How long did it take? 38 metres. Uh, it's not great, but I think that's to do with the conditions. I was hoping for about like 35, maybe 36, but slippery under tyre. That's even a saying. BMW has upgraded this car's chassis over the standard 3 Series, so you get adaptive dampers as standard, different spring rates as well on the suspension, plus the car sits 10 millimetres lower to the ground than the normal 3 Series. There's also stiffer anti-roll bars at the front and the back to stop the car rolling. The Americans call them sway bars, actually. I think that's a much better name. Sway, stop you swaying. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, thanks, thanks for joining. Someone off camera just having a little bit of a join in there. Yeah. Thought we were having a chat rather than me just actually talking to you. But, hey. There's variable ratio steering, which not only is lighter in town and then gets a bit heavier as you go quicker. It can also alter the rate of turn of the front wheels, depending on how much you turn the wheel. Sounds a bit confusing. It's designed to make the car just feel a little bit more responsive. Finally, you get a limited slip differential on the rear axle, which will send power to the back wheel with the most grip to help corner exiting traction. Do you know what? You don't even get an LSD on a McLaren supercar. Seems weird that you get it on this normal family car, not on one of those. Anyway, let's see what all these upgrades do to how this car drives. I reckon a generation or so ago, this could be classed as an M car. It's so good the way it handles. It's good at dealing with the bumps as well. You know, this road is a little bit bumpy and uneven, yet this car is just doing a great job of dealing with that. And the steering is precise. That four wheel drive system is really good. So most of the power goes to the rear and it only sends power to the front when you need that extra traction. You can really get on the power nice and early. And the engine is just so lovely. Loads of torque, pulls really well from low down. I think it pulls better lower down than the engine in the M3. Absolutely love it. The body stays nice and flat through the bends, gives you loads of confidence. Surprising really, considering the conditions, it's just got so much grip. And you can feel it sometimes stepping out on the throttle, but it's easily controllable. All very predictable, all very safe, and all very good fun. Just do a quick U-turn here. So the turning circle is just under 12 meters, which isn't terrible. I should make it round once this guy in the Suzuki. He's looking at me like I'm mad. What are you doing? What are you doing? You're mad. You're, you're turning around in the road. Why are you turning around in the road? That's crazy. Why would you do that ever? Anyway, let's get back to it. The gearbox, even though it's not a dual clutch, it's a eight speed torque converter auto, is very, very fast on the gear changes. I can also hear 
the exhaust pop, 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 popping when I lift off the accelerator, which is nice. There are fake sounds played through the speakers on this car to make it sound more sporty. You can dial them down a bit, but to be fair, I won't bother. They add to the experience. I'm not going to complain too much like some other motoring journalists might, especially when the rest of this car is just so very good in the way it goes down a quick country road. I've got to say, the chassis upgrades on this car definitely have a positive effect. It's good fun to drive. To make sure that the M340i stands out next to normal 3 Series, BMW has given it a more aggressive lower front bumper and they've actually tweaked the design compared to the pre-facelifted version with the vents and just looking slightly different. And these vents, they are real. Look, as I'll illustrate with the car, I stick of truth. No fakery there. The M340i also gets this hexagonal grille effect here rather than slats on the standard 3 Series. Plus the surround is black for a moodier appearance. Speaking of which, the headlights are now thinner than the pre-facelifted version to just make it look meaner more aggressive. Moving down the side, there are some new updated alloy wheel designs and the M340i has unique wheels. You get them as 18 inches as standard though, you can upgrade to 19s, which is what these are, and no extra cost. Most people are probably gonna do that. Another thing that the M340i now gets is fistable door mirrors, like a proper M car. Weird. You've also got frosted blue paint on this particular car. I'm not just talking about this frost, it's got a matte effect to it. Looks really, really nice. At the back, the M340i has a more aggressive rear bumper. And once again, it's slightly different to the pre-facelifted version. We've got a diffuser in there, which is completely fake, doesn't do anything. And we've got some huge exhaust arounds and the real tailpipes are actually in there, much smaller. But at least there are some real tailpipes, which is a good thing. The M340i also gets a little boot lip spoiler and then your M340i badging. Now, obviously all these upgrades do come at a cost. So the M340i starts at just under £58,000. The main changes on this facelifted version of the M340i compared to the previous version is the fact that you get this massive dual bank of screens. Really, really good. Latest infotainment system. Plus you've got some slightly redesigned air vents and a new design for the gear selector. It's a little switchy here. Now the M340i gets some other upgrades over the standard revised 3 Series, such as a sports steering wheel with the M logo on it. We've also got an M little trickler on the, is that my German trickler? Yeah, it's a trickler. No, it's French, isn't it? Anyway, the three color M logo on the seat belts. You've also got an M340i logo on the kick plates and you get sports seats as standard. They can upgrade to the M sports seats, which has like some ribs in them. These are quite nice seats though, but really those are the only upgrades for the M340i. Oh, and the dials, you get M dials up with M logo on them, little M trickler and the special design, like weird design. Oh. Do you know, I put it into reverse when I was like doing the um, gear selector without knowing because I thought it was on the brake anyway. That was interesting. Anyhow, let's just continue like that never happened. So you get the slightly different speedometer and rev counter design. Ooh, that's it. Are you okay? A bit worried. <laughs> yeah, that wasn't good, was it? Let's move on. Here in the back of the M340i, just like with the normal 3 Series, there's sufficient space. Though you do get some of the sporty accoutrements like you get in the front, such as the sport seats with the contouring and the M3 colour stitching on the seat belts. And that's about all you need to know. The boot capacity of the M340i is also unchanged over the normal 3 Series, so 480 litres. Anyway, that brings us on to five annoying things about the BMW M340i. This is the top of the range for the normal 3 Series if you exclude the M3. Yet it doesn't come with lumbar support as standard. This car does have it fitted, but it's an option which costs £265. To make matters worse, if you want adaptive cruise control, which I would do if I bought this car, you have to buy it as part of a technology pack, which costs £3,800. The listed weight of the BMW M340i is 1,725 kilos, which is 55 kilos more than BMW listed for the pre-facelift version. We asked BMW why in fact this chap did over there. What did they say? This didn't give a reason. Brilliant. This carbon fiber trim looks nice, but it's very shiny and therefore very reflective. So when you're driving along, you get reflections of what you're driving past, just flickering away in there and it just catches you in your peripheral vision and it distracts you somewhat, which is an ideal. We all know that Toyota uses the three litre straight six BMW engine from this very car in their Supra and they've made that car way more fun to drive by fitting it with a manual gearbox. Unfortunately though, you can't get this BMW with a manual gearbox, which is a shame. But I have a solution, right? 
put your water bottle there, then you can just pretend, look, that you're changing gears. In fact, that is actually a more precise gear shift than most BMW manuals. <laughs> With the pre-facelifted version of the BMW M340i, to disengage traction control, you would press this button here once to put it into sport traction modes, and then press and hold it to turn the stability all the way off. But that isn't working now, because for some reason BMW have added an extra step. You have to press this button to bring up the traction menu, then use the iDrive to select which mode you want. Which, if you're driving along quickly, or maybe you're on track and you just want to have a particular corner with the stability off, you're going to be faffing around longer than you need to be. However, it's not all bad. Here's five cool things about the BMW M340i. And I've got to say, the fact that you can still turn the stability control all the way off if you want to do some drifts is a good thing. And this car, despite being four-wheel drive because it's rear drive biased will actually drift. The M340i gets a sports exhaust as standard and the good news is there is no sop limiter either so you can rev it all the way up or stationary as we'll illustrate now. Go on start the car. So you get into sports mode. Oh straight six of loveliness. Oh. And one thing I've noticed is, look, it won't auto change up. <laughs> That's really good. Some sporty models will auto change up. This doesn't. As well as the normal sport and sport plus preset modes, you can go into individual and configure it exactly as you want it. The main thing is that it gives you the option to alter the stiffness of the damper. So in the UK with the bumpy roads, I like to have everything in sport apart from the suspension, which I go into comfort so it just glides over the bumps better you get launch control. Yeah, and it actually says launch control on the dash and like some other cars. <coughs> Which don't let you know whether it's actually properly engaged because they don't say launch control. But anyway, look, launch control is active. I'm not gonna launch here because it's on grass. Be messy. Thing is though, this car needs to be good as a daily driver as well as being fun to drive. So let's see what it's like. I'm gonna cruise on the motorway. I'm doing foot miles now in comfort mode, throwing the throttle. Yeah, kickdown's really good, and we are up to speed <laughs> in the blink of an eye. And then when you're just cruising around, actually, it's really relaxing. It's reasonably quiet to travel in. Seats are comfortable. There's very little to complain about, really. Economy, this particular car's averaging about 29 miles to the gallon, which, considering the performance, isn't awful. This car's also good to drive when you're just pootling about in town. The automatic gearbox blends the gears together really well. The brakes are progressive, they're not grabby at all. Also, the suspension, even though it's got a sporty setup, it's still good over bumps, you don't feel them too much. It's such a great old roundup. Do you know what? If I didn't do this job as a motoring journalist where I was constantly in and out of other cars and had the luxury of being able to just buy performance cars for my own dailies, I would have one of these. Now, I used to be a chartered accountant and if I was still a chartered accountant, I can imagine that my family car would be a BMW M340i. So then what's my final verdict on the new BMW M340i? Should you avoid it? Should you consider it? Should you shortlist it? Or should you just go right ahead and buy it? Well, I reckon you should just go right ahead and buy the BMW M340i. Just like a plate of schnitzel, it's a great all-round choice. Now, actually, I'll probably go for the estate version rather than this saloon. But anyway, the same verdict applies. I hope you all enjoyed the video. If you did, give it a like. Let me know if you agree with my verdict in the comments below. If you want to watch more videos, click on those windows there. And if you click on that box there, you can go to CarWow to sell your current car. Just upload some photos, give a brief description, then dealers from all over the country will bid on your car. It's dead easy. Thanks for watching.